Have you had the sense that you have a powerful purpose to help other people along their awakening journey to expand their consciousness? That you have creative gifts that you know want to come through you to be able to allow that flow of energy to be able to transform other people's lives. If you have a sense that you're here to help people and that by bringing these understandings into your own life and becoming consistent in your own daily practice, that you are in fact a light worker. So in this video, we're gonna dive into three signs that you are a powerful light worker who is here to help shift the consciousness. Now, the first one is, is that you are sensitive to energy. You have a sense of the vibe of a situation. Whenever you walk into the room, you can kind of read the field. You can feel what's going on in other people's energies. People will have a tendency to just open up to you naturally. And you have a tendency to be able to channel certain solutions or messages that help those people in that exact moment. And this is also something where synchronicities are amplified for you because you have an ability to sense when you're tuned in or when you're out of alignment. So when you are around people that are not tuning in, who are not prioritizing their own connection to source or are you know, feeding their consciousness with disempowering media and information, you're able to pick up on that. And you realize that it's really impactful for you to cultivate situations, cultivate environments for yourself where you're around people that really you vibe with, where you're able to share your gifts, where you're able to be understood or supported. And you're also aware even more acutely of when there's distortions. And that just brings us to the second sign is that you don't ignore the darkness, you bring the light. Now, being a light worker and being shadow worker are really the same thing because we, as Carl Jung said, don't become enlightened through imagining figures of light by, but by making the darkness or unconscious conscious. So you have an aptitude for being able to, through things that you've gone through in your life, to be able to bring light into any situation, to be able to experience difficult emotions, to be able to experience themes and things that are going on on the planet, and to be able to experience those energies and to be able to transmute them. In my own life, growing up in Indiana, when I was a teenager, I started going through a spiritual awakening. and. During that time, I became really disillusioned with all of the disempowering information and also started to really question everything. I started to realize that I didn't vibe with certain people anymore. And as I began to speak my truth, like for example, high school friends that I would spend a lot of time with, some of them couldn't understand. And I ended up going on a journey and traveling and ended up connecting with people that I resonated more with that supported this shift that I was going through. And throughout that experience, I started to put myself into environments that were more supportive to discovering my own intuitive gifts and unlocking them and sharing them. So this is something that's really powerful is that yes, you can have compassion, you can have empathy, but also it's really important to honor your own inner compass and your own true north and to follow your guidance to also have boundaries. So if you struggle with having boundaries with people, that's a sign that you're blending into their frame of reality. And that what well, key to becoming vibrationally free from that is to be able to find within yourself where you feel the need to please others and in the way that you give up your own truth. And for me, that went back to childhood where there was a dynamic in my house that after my biological parents split up and I grew up with my mom and stepdad, they were working a lot in order to provide. And I was living as an only child. And 
I spent a lot of time alone, but this also created a, t a type of way that I isolated myself from others. And because I was so sensitive to energy, it was difficult for me to always stand in my truth. So I would end up kind of um, changing myself in order to please others or not fully believing in my dreams. And, you know, one of my, you know, one of my grandparents at the time had said something to me like, uh, you know, if you were going to do it, you would have done it already. And it created this feeling that I couldn't, you know, do these creative things and I like fall, like live my purpose and my calling and be successful in that. So that was something that I've, by being able to feel in my body where that came up emotionally, behind that belief, being able to clear those emotions and those limiting beliefs that we inherit that limit our potential and cause us to think that we are not capable of living our dreams and that we're, you know, that we are able to shift that. So being able to see earlier in life how becoming individual, when I became a teenager, I started to, you know, spend more time with my friends. I had a vehicle. I was able to go out and I was able to, you know, be more myself in a way I found that through music and through writing and through create starting to create content and stuff as I got more into my adult life, these became ways that I could channel the creative spark. And also through journaling, I was able to create a deeper connection to my deeper self or my inner being and start to get these messages that led into as I went and I left and I moved to New Mexico, you know, when I was like 19, and I went and lived on the land and traveled and I went and stayed in an ashram for a month back then backpacking around, I started to have this shift of being someone who would live in their truth and that would follow spirit. And so I moved out of the limiting identity that I couldn't live my dreams or that I was living in a space, you know, I was living in a town where people weren't really supportive of the energy that I was bringing through or that I was interested in. So then I ended up moving to different places that were more resonant with that. I discovered conscious communities and I discovered events and festivals and different, um, you know, resources that helped me to expand my consciousness and began to really study those things. So this is a thing is that as you start to fully trust in your path, this brings us to the third, the third sign, which is that you have a truth that is so fundamentally different than people around, that you have something that is so uniquely driving you to realize a dream that sometimes only you're the one that you can hear it. It's a vision that is coming through you and your creative talents and gifts are meant to come through in service to that. So if you wanna have a business, if you're an artist, if you're a coach, if you're somebody who wants to help people through your light work to shift in their life and bring through that new vibration, you know, these are coming through these unique intuitive gifts and abilities and talents and skills that you've cultivated but it's up to you to be able to hone yourself into them. Because what I realized through that process is that as I spent time with myself, I went more into nature, I unplugged from the programming and I really connected to source. I started to get a stream of downloads and inspirations. I started to be guided by spirit and trusting in my own hero's journey as I was going through this awakening process. And it still continuously guides me in any moment and yes, Energy still come up, doubts still come up. It's not like they're gonna go away because as we expand, what we're asking for expands and then we get to line up with it. So this is a message for you that there's something so expansive that is coming through for you. Trust in this calling, trust in the messages that you're receiving them, put them into inspired action. Remember how important it is to develop and maintain energetic hygiene every day by doing practices that help clear you, that help integrate the shadow, that help raise your vibration. 
like meditation, qigong, yoga. These are all tools of that can really transform our life. And also breath work is really good too because these are all ways that we become aware of the energies in ourself and begin to be able to process and transform them. So if you're on this journey and being a light worker is your calling in life, fully trust in it, fully devote yourself to it. Allow yourself the permission. You don't have to be perfect to just start shining your light and sharing your gifts and honing your craft and getting into that zone and creating space to do what you love every single day, no matter what's going on. Because the more that you're able to expand that bandwidth and focus on that, and I understand that sometimes we got to do other things. We got a side hustle going on or maybe multiple or a job or, you know, sometimes there's things you do to get by as you're creating this new life. I understand that. But it's not going to change by thinking that when you get there, then you're going to be the inspired, successful creator. As a light worker, you get there by doing the work of transformation and the, tr and the transmutation process and showing up and sharing your gifts. You do it by leaning into embodying this new version of yourself every single day. And the more that you entrain that, you're embodying the vibration of that and you're becoming a match to that reality. That's leaning into the unknown. That's becoming, feeling the uncomfortable, you know, feeling the fear and doing it anyways. That's allowing yourself to feel the, you know, the emotions and the doubts that are coming up around it and being able to tune into your truth and reprogram those limiting beliefs because you do have a powerful message that you are here and people need your medicine. So the more that you prioritize that devotion, the more that you show up for that energetic clearing, the more that you follow the impulse of inspiration when it comes through and put it into inspired action, you're expanding that bandwidth. And the more that you expand that, the more that you're going to attract cooperative components, the more you're going to attract synchronicities and new opportunities and connections that are going to support the fulfillment of your dreams. So let this be an affirmation that you in fact are a light worker who is here to help people, that is here to help shift the consciousness on this planet. And we need more people that are lit up and inspired and doing what we love for that to happen. So thanks for tuning in. Um, here's another video on the channel that could help you along your journey. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and hit, hit that bell notification if you wanna get notified of regular videos on the channel. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.